Hello everybody, it's Chris, and we are going to try to tackle the knotters on this 720. And it's not a major rebuild or anything like that, if you saw the first cutting video. It's having trouble with the right knotter, making knots that would hold. Did a little reading up on the subject, and I think i uh, got a couple things. First off, the knives, which we'll flip this up here, but they feel kind of dull. They could use a good sharpening. But it is, you know, it's cutting them off. There's a little fray there. A little fray on the other one. Um, cheap baler twine. i learning that, you know, once again, quality costs money. Um, this stuff had a knot strength of, I think, 130. And a friend, he uses up around, uh, likes to have up around 170. Basically, it's just a thicker twine. That can withstand more weight pushing against it so you can make a tighter bale um, but the probably the biggest thing and every now and then i would have problems with this right knotter since i rebuilt it last and or first last all the times and um i think i've tracked it down to this here i notice uh i've traced this down this is the string for that side and this one is tighter than this one. The bolt is actually recessed in that clamp there, not here. And from what I've read, um, you want some tension on there or string's gonna like get caught up and stuff and not, not right, but you don't want too much. So if we look, here's the right knotter and there's a little bit sticking through and Here's the left knot. I've got a lot more sticking through. And from what I read, that has to do with the amount of drag there. It's not letting enough, uh, it's kind of pulling back on it and uh, not leaving enough tail out. Now that may look like enough, but once you get back here where the pressure starts coming off the bale, the bale tightens up because it gets past the pressure bar there. Starts expanding out, the strings get tight, pulls the knots tight. And look how little is sticking through that knot versus that knot. And that can be enough for the knot to pull through. You want a little more tail, you want more like this than this. So honestly, I think uh, just the main problem is just loosening that baby up a little bit. But as long as I'm in here, I'm gonna flip them up, sharpen those knives. And I'm also gonna buy some better quality twine but yeah, just put my finger under there. There's a knife. It's, I'm not going to get hurt <laughs> type of uh, need sharpening. So let's get at it. Grab a couple wrenches and we'll flip that baby up. You know, it's pretty simple. There's a bolt right here that anchors the whole thing. And most knotters on square balers run off the same patent, so... There might be slight variations in them that make some of the parts not interchangeable, but the actual way they make the knot is almost identical. Um, I think Massey Ferguson had a unique knotter at one point, but um, I know, I think if these were designed today, the engineers would look at that and have all sorts of servos and solenoids and a computer to control it because they wouldn't think of just doing it all purely mechanically once that bolts out oh yeah the twine's keeping it from lifting there we go had to pull some twine through she's flipped up you can see this twine arm has some use on it look at the notch the twine is worn in that and over the, well this thing's uh, a little bit older than me so <laughs> There has been a lot of twine that's gone through that arm. But the uh, easiest thing to do is going to be to take the cotter pin out of the top here that holds that twine arm in. Then I can flip this up. Ouch! And wash my fingers. Because it's wanting to follow. There's a the cam and all that doohickey stuff. It's Almost like it's trying to tie a knot as I rotate that around. And that that bill, bill hook has got some wear on it too. But 
I wonder if I have a new one of those. I did put a new gear on here. All right, let me go get the right tools for the job. <sighs> Give it up. You're gonna get a new one anyways. New cotter pin that is. For as cheap as they are, it ain't worth reusing an old one. Except for any you know, dire emergencies. As in, you don't have the right size cotter pin and you want to get back to work. Okay, watch the fingers. Another duh moment. Got to get it rotated up here because uh, as it comes across the bill hook, that's where it swipes the knot off. I think that's supposed to be a little closer too. Might have to try to adjust that. But it was trying to catch that. Here, I'll show you what I'm trying to do is uh, the knife's got to get past the bill hook there, so it's got to be in a certain position because as it comes around, that cam action forces the arm in and out like it's normally supposed to do when it rotates. But then you can't slide it down off its pin or the pin out of the hole once that knife gets there, unless it's in a certain position. Okay, here's what happened since the battery died on the GoPro. Um, let's see, it wasn't quite coming out, so I triggered the, um, well, I got the plunger rolled back so it's all the way back, so the needles ain't hitting any hay or something if they came up, when they came up. Triggered the knotter by pulling up on that all the way, and then I could just move that back and forth by hand and advanced it some got turned up around here still just couldn't quite get it so i finally relented and took this arm off that pushes against the bill hook a spring-loaded arm and hopefully i can get it back in somewhere in the close setting that it was it's not tightened all the way down so i'll do one side at a time tighten the nut down to what that one looks like that'll be a good starting spot if nothing else but once I got that arm off, then I could swing this up here with it rotated like this. Got the, uh, the knife arm rotated past the bill hook. And then it could slide right out like so. And then we can see the, the knife edge. Not the best. I got looking, I don't have any knives on hand. So we're gonna to try to sharpen this one. It should work. And you got this edge here to uh, guide the twine into the knife. And I was thinking I even had a new twine arm, but I do not. So let's get this in the vise. I'll get a, um, I guess we'll try it with a file. Not sure how much sharpening I'll be able to do with the GoPro right there, but uh, at least you can get an idea. Go with something a little finer. See how that works. Oh, look at that. Nice clean cut. Don't really want to use a grinder or uh, something to get it hot and take the temper away, or I end up grinding up off too much and ruining it. I guess uh, I like the finesse of a file.
Cutting pretty clean. Guess we'll give it a try. So while I was looking for uh, a twine arm and uh, knives, I found I have a brand new uh, bill hook. Guess as long as I'm this far, there should be a roll pin in here somewhere under the dirt like that. So it would be facing this way. But to anywho, um, drive that out and swap this out. I'll keep that old bill hook. It was still working, but you can see, look at the wear on that compared to a new one. I've got it. Might as well use it. There, not too bad once you find it. Should just be a matter of, should just be a matter of. Crying it up out of the old, or out of the gear. Definitely want to be careful on this because all this cast iron frame here, there's a, it can crack if you whack things too hard. We don't want that. There it goes. There we go. Now there's some wear on the bottom part of the shaft. I guess it'd be able to tell better wire wheel it, but you know, yeah, I could feel it. And that bottom bushing, so that's gonna help some too, because it's supposed to be the same diameter all the way down. I have been told that uh, the John Deere bill hook, I'm not sure which model, is this will work other than the shaft is a little bit bigger which is all right because if the holes are uh, a little worn you can drill them out to match the new shaft and uh, be back in business didn't go all the way this gear should slide out like this this is yes that fits nicely let's just check the old one Definitely some looseness down here. There's no grease irk on this lower end. So it gets wear. Something to watch out for is there are shims in here that keep the gear space right to this main driver gear. And if they get loose, which is what happened uh, to me after years and years of wear, they got to be too much of a gap there and a gear skipped over teeth and uh, got stuff out of time and and when the needle come up things weren't in the right place and it busted this uh casting not the pieces but it cracked it and then things just wouldn't work right even after i got it retimed and everything and I gotta find the hole. Should be right about there. Should be right about there. Come on. See, as this spins around, that cam wheeler doohickey here opens the jaw up, then closes it so it opens and grabs the yarn, the, yarn <laughs> the, the twine at the right time, brings it around, closes, 
has both of them in its little grasp, the knife comes, or, yeah, the knife arm comes back over, pushes the stuff that's wound around the outside over, and uh, pulls a knot off, and this is kind of holding the ends. I will use my punch to get it aligned up to start with. Then hopefully Sometimes you don't have the right tool, you make the right tool. Took a ring shank nail, ground the end smooth. That was just the right size to get in there and drive that friction pin the rest of the way in. It looks like it is flush with the bottom of the gear on each side, so should not interfere. That got rid of some of this sideways play, putting that new bill hook in. Yeah, there was a fair amount of wear on this old one. Surprised I didn't switch it then. But like I said, I'll still hang on to it. It was functional. Can you see it? Look at that wear. Okay, what did I do with the knife? I put it here. So I ended up doing it like this, but backwards, taking it apart. Then I could swing it like this, get it in the rest of the way. Here, I'll have to, I may have to get the book out yet. I swear that it's supposed to be closer to that bill hook. But we will get the cotter pin on that, which I gotta get a new one for that. All right, we will get this back on. Oh, let's see. Oh yeah, spring first. Doing. Then there's a peg to here that this lines up with. That's why it's a good idea to do it one side at a time. You can look at the other side and verify that you got it right. So it looks like a, oh nope, spring is on the outside, my bad. See, good thing I looked. That seems better. Get that pin lined up there, put the spring on. That's much better. See, when I follow my own advice, I do all right. There should be a washer. Maybe? Nope. Looks like about the amount, same amount of stud sticking through as the other one. What this does is as this, uh, of course now it's geared in, but as that bill hook turns around, that cam wheel comes around by this, and that just kind of forces it to uh, close. There's no spring pressure against it without it, so that's what helps it grab the twine and hold it. And as it rolls up around here, Grab the, what does it go this way, I think? That opens up the jaws, let it grab the twine and uh, and then this arm here just pushes it back closed so it can hold the twine. This side should be complete. We'll drop that back down, watching our fingers. Put the bolt back in. I'm right here, might as well pull the other one and uh, sharpen it as well. It was working pretty good, but yeah, that one I've got that. That's the one I had to 
Yeah. I can tell that's a newer twine arm. This is the one I worked on. I mean, this one's doing all right, but I think I need to get that uh, twine arm a little closer to the bill hook after seeing that. I guess I will break out the book if worse comes to worse. Yeah, the knife's about like new on that one. Yeah, this is definitely the one I had to replace stuff on. <laughs> well, I'm right here. Let's get that knife out of here for the moment. But yeah, see how that needs to pretty much just about touch the, it's just touching that bill hook. But that's after the bill hook spins around with it, the twine's wrapped around it. And so when when things go around and this arm pushes, oh, it's, dang it, Ugh, I hurt myself yet. All right, so we're at this point, it's made the knot. And as this knife arm gets forced out, it pushes the twine off the end. This is still holding it. So then the loop comes down around here. Then as it keeps coming around, it'll eventually open up the claw and get around to there. Hits the right gears at the right time, opens it up. I can see why this side was doing better. Basically new parts. Part of it. Well, that was clocked just enough different to where it made the twine arm or the cotter pin for the twine arm in an unbearable position to get out. There we go. Yeah, this one's newer. It's got a channel cut in there to basically act as a grease reservoir. And the knife looks pretty good. But we'll hit her with a file real quick. You can see where the string does all of its work. The twine right there in the corner. And the bill hook looks like new. I must replace that too. So yeah, I think I'll just put a little sharp on this and this can go back together. And this one over here should be better with new parts and a sharp knife. And I think I'm going to adjust that twine arm. I didn't take long to clean up. It seemed like a cut twine pretty good. Ran some across it. So let's see which side of that does it go on. see that I've got that to where it's just clearing the bill hook. Swipe that off from there. Okay, find another cotter pin. There's that peg you line up. Spring. And the lock nut. Out where it was. About three, four threads showing. It's fine threaded. pressure but not too much spring pressure and that side should be done so now I need to flip this other one back up so I can readjust the twine arm so that it comes at it like that Whee. okay the way to adjust this is to twist it and you want to be careful because I think it's cast steel instead of regular cast iron it's a little more flexible but um, you don't want to break it so let's put this somewhere where you can watch 
and see if I break it. Well, I don't want to get it over the bill hook because then I can't bend it. But here I am. Maybe if I go a little past it. Carefully. There. We'll just run her by hand, whichever way that is. Well, that's a lot closer. Let's give her just a smidge more. Famous last words, right? Oh, yeah, stop move. Stop move. Now it needs to come out just a little bit. Not quite. There's a curve to it that follows that, and I'm a little out of that. Up and down a little bit. That felt like it tweaked a little. That's looking better. Okay, I think I have that to where I can live with it. Is it? Just clears the bill hook. Much closer than it was before. Not quite touching. I think that's about as good as I'm going to get it. The other one was just dragging a little. It seems like I can't, with this one being new, the edge ain't rounded off. But I think that'll work. So, um, let me think. That should be it, um, other than lubing it up. But I thought, since I'm at this point, we can run through a, a knotting cycle so you can get an idea of what's actually going on here. Hopefully. Remove the witchcraft from it. Okay, normally, you're making a bale. This part here is down farther. When you start a new bale, it pops all the way up to this. That's how you set your bale length, is adjusting this. And then as the bale pushes, it turns that star wheel, which slowly rolls this up until it catches in this part. That triggers it, but it has to be in the right time. So you have um, the plunger needs to be all the way back. And I'm trying to remember how it senses that. Well, anyways, the plunger has to be all the way back. There are slots in the plunger. And let's see if we can get under here. There are slots in the plunger, so these needles, which are already part way in, because I've triggered it and moved it by hand. The plunger holds the hay back, has the slots that the needles go through. You got the twine from the, which is this one's actually tied, but the bale you're forming the twine from the bale or the the twine chamber and as these needles push in they push the twine on up through with them so this might trigger off in the middle of a stroke or whatever until the plunger gets in the right spot then this stuff trips to let this do its thing 
And from there, uh, it's like as the plunger's coming back, it trips it and the needles start coming up and they enter just as the plunger gets to it when it's timed all right. And so the plunger comes back a little bit more as the needles kept coming through. And so I will uh, roll it over by hand so we can see what's going on. Okay. The plunger had to go over center. It takes a little bit of effort to squish that hay down again. But let's see. So as this turns, you got this arm that pulls the needle arm up in. It's not quite at full stroke. It will be when it gets over here. So let's keep going. But in the meantime, these are turning. But as you see, there's part of them with no teeth in them. So nothing happens. And then there's teeth on the outer part and the inner part. You got two gears that are driven. The one that runs that bill hook and the other one that runs the twine disc. This one's the twine disc comes down. It's got a warm gear to change the direction of the turn. Twine disc grabs it and turns the uh, turns the twine to twist it around the bill hook. So it looks like I need to advance it just a little more. I am going to flip one side up so we can get a better visualization, and that will be the side. And this side, I'll put a bolt in just so it stays lined up right. I'll turn it some more by hand. I'm past the hard part. Uh, of course, the twine is loose because I'm all my dilly dallying. Um, but you can see the needle comes up through. And here, the twine disc has grabbed it and it started turning. That gear there, you should have seen that. So it has the pair. Let me come around the other side. Uh, of course, it's about impossible to see. But it has the, the twine from the previous bale, plus the twine coming up from the knotter in that disc. So that's going to come around and make it so that, of course, with this one being turned up, it's out of time now. But the two strings get caught in the uh, jaws as it comes around, which will now be open. They're not because of it being out of time. Because it's rotating around this way, bringing them closer to the bill hook. And the bill hook can swing around, grab them, keep going around. So let's uh, keep going. Let's see which angle do we want. As that come around the cam wheel for the uh, that twine knife, right now it's still in position, but it'll eventually come back, sweep that stuff off the knotter, and then the knife catches the two strings, cuts them off. The twine wheel holds on to the string that's still coming out of the uh, needle here, and that's what holds for the next bale, and pushes it off the the bill hook, boom, you got a knot that falls down. Down here, tension from the bale pulls the string tight eventually, and, and away you go. Start the process over. There's the two different sets of gears, a little easier to see now. Just different things have to turn at different times. Yeah, 
loose twine, not good. Yeah, we'll have to tie that off down below. But uh, as you can see, this uh, arm here is returning the twine arms, the needles back down to their home position. When they get back, there's this lever here that goes back and that holds that back. What that does is a little dog comes up in the chamber so that the uh, when the plunger comes back, it uh, can hit. It will hit that dog. Basically, if this stuff didn't all return to home, say a chain broke or something, this thing doesn't get pushed back. The dog doesn't drop out of there. The plunger hits the dog, shears the shear bolt off on the flywheel, and you stop bailing. But you also don't smash all your stuff. Hopefully. So uh, let's see. Yeah, we're just about through the process now. And there we have it. This twine would actually be hanging underneath like this side. And then hay would start pushing against it this way, forming a new bale. The twine would pull around the bale as it pushed back. And eventually uh, repeat the process. And since that one's messed up, we will just, if you ever uh, run out of twine, break twine or whatever, you just get it through the needle and then just uh, tie it on somewhere, just like so. That's why all these are hanging down here. And then you can either trigger it by pulling this baby up. It'll go through a cycle. The other side will make them try to make a knot. So it's better um, if you just made a knot, that's gonna make a mess on the other side. So feed a little hay or straw into it to let it get to its, um, so it's pushed it back some, there's some tension on the twine, trip it. You'll have a little section with no string on this side, but that'll come up. The twine disc will catch it. It won't make a knot because there's only one end, but it'll hold it for the next bale and you're good to go again. So hopefully that I didn't make that as clear as mud. In here you can see the lobe that pushes the uh, knife arm in and out to make it do its thing. This inner set of teeth are for the uh, twine disc. The outer set are for the bill hook. All right, I guess I'll boulder all down and um, run it through the process one more time to make sure I did not uh, screw something up. A lot better to do it by hand and hear it go clunk and stop than to fire it up with a tractor and hear it go bang and break. Grease these babies regularly. Um, these two up on the shaft, I try to give them a lot so a little bit squeezes out where these shims are at so they've got some lubrication too. But then ones like these, you don't want to overdo it because then grease gets down on the twine and can make things not go right. So better to I'll grease them more often with just a little bit of grease than have it squeezed out everywhere and making a mess and causing other issues. So I'm going to grease this baby up. And then I will run it by hand. One, one other piece I forgot is these little hooks here. They run off this cam piece here that pushes that arm down. And that moves them over, helps push the twine over from the bale so that they're both together up here and down there. So the bill hook grabs them properly. So yeah, twine brings it around. Bill hook comes around, opens, grabs the pair. That spring arm as a cam action closes that. It makes a complete 360 and it's eventually closed as the knife arm comes by, it wipes the wound up part off from here while it's still holding that. And then the string can slip out of there. And boom, not. Took me a while to get my head around it. Someone was one smart cookie all those years ago. I remember all those trips now. Certain, uh, it's gotta be clocked a certain way. And so what you do is uh, you have to get the piston, or I'm sorry, the plunger back, 
and the needle's coming up and if they are not entering just as the plunger gets by you have to change the chain links to get it timed right and um, that's pretty much all there is to it is adjusting a chain link here or there so you, when you if you ever bust a chain you got to get it timed but you also got to have the I don't think the number of links matters but there's definitely a lot of timing that goes on here everything's got to happen but yeah, so uh, once this gets, it resets that, but it has to be at a certain position for the trigger inside to grab. And when you have the chain timed right, that's exactly when the plunger is in the right spot. So that's how it triggers that. All right, manual run. Well, I didn't hear anything hit. And it brought this twine back up. So that's good. That one's locked and loaded for the next time. That one appears to be okay. So I think we're, we might as well give her a test run. I can bust open a bale of straw or something. I'll put the old bill hook in the toolbox here kind of neat don't want to wipe it too hard dad would keep track of uh, different number of bales 1973 I know we had it before that I think this is a 69 model but uh, yeah all that history on there dad always had a grease pen with him write that kind of stuff down. If I can get that twine disc to hold that or if I need to thread the needle all right okay we'll tie it over like that trip it and see what happens of course it's gonna do is break the twine Made it on. 
not on this side. I'm not sure it did so well on this side. No. Tying that there might not have been the best solution. We'll feed it some more, see what happens. need to cut that there we got a baby bale that's gonna have only be tied on one side but we'll give her a little more straw and then see what happens Okay, that looks good enough to make a knot. Yeah. Don't try this at home. There we go. Oh, I think we have a knot. Everybody say thanks, Randy, for mowing my lawn. GoPro got full, so I'm using the phone. You might notice a quality difference. Let's turn that off. Okay. These knots it made without me tripping or interfering at all. I think I can live with that. Better twine would probably help, but not really any frayed ends. Good clean cuts, enough pigtail sticking out. I guess until one gets out enough to uh, tension the twine. But I'll do it this way. There goes a the GoPro. I think they're gonna be good. I think we'll call that good. I got lots of footage. See if I can whittle it down to where it ain't excruciatingly long. But I think I got a successful uh, maintenance of my knotters. I guess there was one new part, new bill hook. 880 still purring like a kitten. So, as always, I appreciate everybody watching. And we will see you in the next one.